I got the solar panel. Um, as you saw in the previous video, I got the vinyl on. So now I'm prepping the solar panel to be attached. So um, bought this 3M uh, VHB double-sided tape off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the video. Um, but this one actually came with some uh, alcohol pads. So what I'm gonna do is take these alcohol pads, wipe down the entire uh, solar panel, and then start cutting my strips of tape so I can put it everywhere. Um, and then I will clean the vinyl and then stick this onto the vinyl. All right, so it's all clean. Um, now I'm gonna start taking strips of the tape. Um, cutting them up as I need and start lining them out on there. Um, I'm going to leave obviously the one side so when I go to put on the hood then I can peel it off then. I'm going to try to go as much as I can along the edge so that way it'll keep water out. So you can see, got tape going down all the way. Sorry for the glare. Kids toys, everything, you know. But um, yeah, did about, I don't know, it's about four, five inches apart. Obviously the one in the center is a little more, but um, yeah, big strips. So then it can just set right on. And then I did one full edge to keep the water out. Alright, so I got the vinyl on, I got the um, double side 3M tape on the solar panel, so it's ready to go on here, so I'm just going to wipe this whole thing down with the provided alcohol pads, make sure it's all clean. The double side tape I got comes with like three um, little towelettes of rubbing alcohol. So I found a few bubbles that I took um, out with a needle, so if you have any big bubbles just use a little needle if you want um, to pop them out and make it flat, but again, as long as they're nothing, anything smaller than like a pencil eraser, it's not going to matter. You just don't want anything bigger than like a dime. Okay, so now I'll go get the solar panel, um, and then definitely have someone probably help you with it so you get it all lined up nice and easy. So then just do a dry test fit, see where I want it before I take the strips of tape off. So I'm going in with about a quarter inch, almost all the way around it. And then I'm just gonna have cord go in. I'm actually gonna scoot it probably further back a little bit so it's a little less on the back end. All right, so that's where I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna flip it over. So now all you do, yeah, that's really good. Just press it down. We're gonna pull, start pulling these out. 
and just keep working it towards the front of the hood. Now I'm going to put some weights on it to hold it down so it can really uh, adhere to the vinyl on the hood. Um, I'm still up in the air. I've seen a few guys actually put like a little silicone bead um, around the edges. So I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do that. I'm basically going to see how it um, holds up just from the tape and then I'll go from there. Um, but I did talk to one guy who did um, an install and he took some black silicone and just put like a little bead around. He also did um, the door edge trim. So that'd be another option. I don't think I want to do that. I think I might try to make it just a clean part with the silicone. But yeah, so right now, um, take something that you have that won't ruin the solar panel, but has some weight so you can put it down on. Um, we actually have rubber uh, dumbbells that we're gonna use. Take it back. We have rubber plates that we're gonna use. I think I'm most worried about the front part of it just because it kind of rolls down a little bit. So I'm gonna have more weight up there to get to hold down, and then I might be putting the silicone on there. there. So yeah, maybe a little excessive on the weight, but really trying to get it to stick um, and adhere. So just that's it for now. I'm gonna let it sit for a few hours, check it out, and then decide on the silicone. All right, so I already taped off just uh, right around the edges. What I'm going to do is put this silicone I got right along the edge. Um, the tape is holding pretty well, and I've driven it already on a few times on the freeway, but it's still just a little bit, and I kind of just want to put, I'm going to at least test a bead around the whole um, front section to see, and maybe just I might end up doing the whole thing if this turns out well um, to keep it just fully watertight. Um, I got some black adhesive sealant, uh, silicone RTV um, off of Amazon, I'll throw the link. Um, some of the other guys I saw were doing some more heavy duty stuff. I, they were using it instead of tape, so I already used tape, so I'm just using it more as the sealant. So wanted to do this, but just taped it, so trying to keep it as clean as possible. I'm going to use a glove, but I want to try to just get like a bead right around the edge so that's what I'm gonna try to do right all right so here we go I'm gonna try doing the full bead get some underneath see how it works just pushing that down trying to get that nice smooth bead So I'm gonna let that sit. Um, I think it says an hour to settle, but to fully cure is uh, 24 hours. So just gonna let it sit, see how it turns out, and then I'll decide if I wanna do more of it or not. All right, so I let it sit just for, I don't know, three, four hours, checking it out. Um, actually really happy with it. I see a couple little bubbles that I need to, uh, or like holes. Then I'll just put some more silicone in, but overall I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, so gonna go ahead and just go ahead and do a bead all the way around so that way it is uh, fully watertight onto the vinyl. So it's nothing like too major, um, but basically it's just kind of giving it an extra seal that I just felt makes it look cleaner and uh, also make, keeps it a little more watertight. But basically I put a little bead of silicone all along the edge, used my finger and just went like that the whole way to keep it nice and smooth or as smooth as possible. And then just took a razor blade um, and kind of cleaned it up. I used painter's tape because um, as you can see, it has a little bit of a um, gap right here. 
um, sorry, uh, extra vinyl. So I put painter's tape to overlay so make sure I didn't get any um, silicone on any of the paint. And then just peeled it off and then yeah, cut off whatever extra. I could still do a little more cleaning, but um, again, your preference. So that's all good to go. And next I'm gonna work on wiring it all up. All right, so you can see I ran the wire up from under. I decided to put it under this uh, felt right here, kind of like the washer fluid tubes. So I just put a little uh, sticky um, holders um, that you can zip tie to. I'll put the link in there, but yeah, I just bought like a 100 or 200 pack. Um, only need a couple, but I'm putting, running it up there. Comes down right into there, and now I'm working on going to go through that grommet right there into the passenger bay. Um, but as you can see, you flip this open. Uh, I did one zip tie right there. I'm gonna snip that off, just making sure everything fits right um, before tightening it fully. But just running it up there, and I'm just making sure, so I didn't put one of these um, up in here on this side. I'm just having it go above the little um, plastic pin. Um, and then yeah, it's just going right there, and then I'm just gonna do a little zip tie right here. So I'm gonna be running my wires um, from the passenger side firewall through down here. I'm gonna run them along um, the door sill. I'm gonna put my MPPT um, controller underneath the seat, and then I'm just gonna run one set of wires um, back to the back of the forerunner for my power bank, and then it's gonna have the solar panel wires and the battery power wires going um, through the firewall. So battery power wires will go to the battery, obviously, and the solar to the solar. Run as few wires as I can for distance, but the MPPT controller is better to stay out of the uh, engine bay for heat. All right, so you gotta take this little nut off right here, just a little plastic nut. Um, then I'm going to pry that open and pry the deal door sill open and then we'll go from there All you do you got these little caps right here um, I just took this metal popper that I have um, You can just work your way up around so I'll put that one back in um, But Yeah, so it's just one two three four of them and you just kind of yeah, get your um, panel popper in there pop it out um, this one has one right here the kicker panel has one right there and then it's got this little metal one but once you get this one off down here the long one it almost just pulls directly back towards you away from the front end um, but as you can see there's already wires around here so all i'm gonna do is get in there um, get my wires in and just run them right along in here here's the inlet to go underneath the chair um, and then I could pop them out right where that vent is. So there's a little rubber um, gasket way up in here where the other wires are coming through. So I saw where someone else cut a hole in that and then brought the wires through. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'll show you in the engine bay. If you can see, so this there's like a little, this gasket right here, there's like a little rubber nipple up here that is uh, hollow. Um, so I'm gonna cut that off and run my wires through that. All right, so this is the little like nipple that was in there um, that I cut off so you can see the hole right there the top left so I'm gonna run my wires through there it is a little smaller I'm gonna see if I can squeeze up mine in um, if not I'll just put a couple uh, slits around it to uh, open it up a bit um, the easiest I found was I used uh, one of these type razor blades um, and just used it like a saw going back and forth working my way down to uh, break it loose I tried using a regular like box cutter knife and it wasn't working very well but I had that one so that'll work but really anything you have um, to cut it would should work and then I'll just use the regular one to cut the slits in if I need to. So what I found was I was trying to show if obviously I'm putting four wires through so that hole is pretty small for four wires um, and when I was trying to push it through it popped the whole uh, gasket inside so I pulled it out and then found that on the other side of that little nipple is another little rubber piece so I cut that out and then put a couple slits in it to open it up and have no problem uh, going through so what I'm doing is I'm shoving it all the way through um, down into the kicker panel over there and then once I get my wires where I want well I'm not gonna pull them I'll put this gasket back in and if I'm really worried about it you just throw some uh, silicone or glue or whatever um, in there to try to seal it up but... things easier I'm actually gonna take the seat out so you pop these uh panels off that are right there um, and then you got two bolts under there they're 14 uh, millimeter 
and I'm just going to use my um, power drill to take them out um, and then lift the seat right off, fully take it out. I just flipped it up, um, but ran the wire in right there, popped it out right there, so it's just saying so my MPT uh, controller will go sit right there and it'll be good to go. So all I did was strip it, like that, just twist it, and I take my uh, terminal, shove it in there, twist it around. All right, so you can see they're both at the end, so then those are ready to go. Um, and then when I put the screw in from the MPPT controller, uh, they'll tighten down on the wires and they shouldn't pull out. I screwed in the ground wire right there, ran it all the way. So all my wires are right there bundled up. And then I just did a jumper for the ground uh, negative. So two going into one, one in there. I took all the wires, they go in under here, into the channel right here, and then the one going to the left is going all the way back for my accessory, and then the one power going to the right is going to the battery hookup. Um, on this MPPT controller, the battery is in the middle, uh, right side's the accessory. So yeah, I'm just running a 10 gauge wire just so I have no loss at all. A little bit of overkill, but just want to make sure it's good to go. And then my MPPT controller just sits underneath my seat. Um, so it can slightly be accessible, but not too much. So what I did was I ran the power wire for the battery out through the grommet and it goes up back along the firewall right over there all the way over to here. I put this uh, fuse block right here with a circuit breaker for extra protection. So my solar panel wire comes here. I just have it labeled as auxiliary. Uh, I got my rock lights um, and my light bar hooked up so all those positives and then I got my big ground wire right here right now I have this battery monitor right here just plugged in uh, keeping everything the battery as clean as possible this is a Bluetooth so I can look at monitor my battery levels that way since the MPPT controller is not Bluetooth there's tons of videos online for this but it's just to clean everything up so you don't have a lot of wires going directly to your battery so I have the circuit breaker for extra protection and also it's nice because if I need to work on anything I can easily just flip this switch and it cuts off all power to the fuse block and then close it and it's powered back up so what I did back here is the outlet panel um, the factory one I went ahead and added a uh, USB double USB with a voltmeter and then another cigarette lighter but what I was debating on doing was switching out the cigarette lighters here with bigger wires but these are so small for the factory ones I just decided to be it safe and run my 10 gauge all the way back here and then I grounded it on this little bolt right there so I grounded it there and ran the 10 gauge all the way and then for both the power and ground they're just jumped from each side and then for this panel right here it's a little difficult to get out so what you do is it has two notches at the top so it flips up like that and then it's got two pins down here or push parts so what you do is on the other end when you're in here you're gonna have to to get this off you start popping it on this side but it's bolted over here you actually have to snap it off uh, to be able to get it out unless you take the whole panel apart but these pins still work and I've been using it and it hasn't been an issue um, so I'm not worried about breaking those off but you reach your hand down in here to pop these pins down at the bottom so then you can pull the whole thing out but right there just got it all lined up so now it's all done the one has two USB outs one is a quick charge you have the power button right there it shows your current battery voltage um, it also controls the power for the USB, so if that's off, then there's no power. Then I got a constant USB, uh, sorry. And then I have a constant cigarette lighter that will go to directly to my refrigerator or my power station to charge it. Then I left the factory uh, cigarette lighter and uh, AC out. So that way I have them all right here, ready to go. These are constant. These are the factory ones that go on when you have the key turned on.
All right, so nice sunny day like this. Tested it out. I'm pulling her in around low 20s on the voltage. Um, in the shade, it's still getting in the like high teens. So overall, really good uh, draw on that. Um, overall, the solar panel is really good. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. This is meant for me to power my power station and my refrigerator. Uh, some guys, you might want to look into like a dual battery setup if you don't have a power station. That could help, especially if you have an accessory plugged in. But overall, this is a really good option if you want something that's constantly charging your batteries on the go. And the only thing would be is if it's constantly overcast or whatnot, but any solar panel will have an issue with that. The only thing I don't like about this one is their MPPT controller. It's not Bluetooth. I would prefer a Bluetooth one so that way you always have the monitoring system compared to the little battery monitor that I got or the voltmeter in the back. Having that to go to your phone, you can see all the different output, the wattage, the amps, the voltage, and you can see like what it's pulling at currently. Um, me putting my MPPT controller under the passenger seat makes it a little more difficult to see what I'm pulling at all times. Uh, I have to pull it out from under the seat to look at it and possibly move the car around where if you have it on the app, you can just look on your phone and decide to move the car if you need to or you just have a general idea of what you're getting out of it. Other than that, it's been doing really good and I really like it and definitely recommend it as a brand if you want to get a solar panel mounted to your hood.